Hi, I'm Jeff Flateau, the Cookie Man. I've been in the food business for over 30 years. And one thing I can tell you for certain, you never know what's coming around the bend. While it's the food that may have brought you to our show, it's the people and their stories that'll keep you coming back for more. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Welcome back to another episode of That's the Way the Cookie Crumbles. I'm here today with one of my best friends, Faraj Buargu. Faraj is from Libya and uh, has been in the United States for several years. I'll let him tell you that story. Uh, he's got a great business out here in Olo, God's country. And uh, we're here today to uh, talk to him, uh, take a look around the shop and see what's happening in his life. Faraj, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, good, good to, to see, see you again. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time. Faraj and I go way back uh, um, and uh, we've had some great times together working as well as uh, leisure. Tell us Faraj, where were you born? I was born in uh, Tobruk, Libya in the, in the Middle East in uh, North Africa. I moved to Hattiesburg and actually uh, uh, I started the food business in, in the coast and the first place I worked at was Samuels. You remember that? I remember, yeah. Sure do, yeah. Yeah. I worked there for a couple of years. Then I moved to Hattiesburg and I worked at Samuels. It was on Hardy Street. Hardy Street, right. I worked there for a while and then went to Chesapeake. And that's, that's where, where we met. met. Yeah. That's Back in the 80s. Long time 83, ago. 82, 83. Yeah. yeah. And uh, from Chesterfield, we worked there for a while. Then remember me and you went to uh, Huntsville, Alabama, yeah. and opened first Rocket City. Yeah, you remember? <laughs> I remember that. that. <laughs> yeah. I remember. We worked there for a while, then we came back and opened one in Hansburg. Yeah, and that's where we. Uh, I was working for you. You were general manager. I was assistant manager. Then you left, and I became a general manager. And that's my story in the food, food business, which is, what, 16, 18 years? Yeah. So uh, when you left, in Rocket City, you left there and came, and you started your meeting. 94, that's when uh, I bought this business in 1994. I've been here ever since. Have you been back to Libya? One time. In 2011, first time I went, that's been 36 years, worth time. First time I went, seen my family, and it was awesome. But before that, you couldn't. Right. You before, I couldn't. Yeah. If I, if I did go when Gaddafi was there, I would have got arrested. My, if my name was in the airport, they were waiting on me. And you're, you're, so you didn't get to go to your parents' funeral? No. Both my parents died. I couldn't go. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that here in the United States we probably don't fathom. Uh, but uh, I went through it. Yeah. You got through it and you, you thrived out here. I know uh, before the interview we were talking and uh, Faraj mentioned that he's got more business than he can handle. That doesn't mean that he doesn't want more business, but he's he's doing very well here. And I know from working with him and, and he, when he worked for me, we worked together basically. He uh, always did an excellent job. What's, what's the, the business name mean, Family Meats? Actually, when, when I first got into business, it was me and my brother a lot of work together. So. It was like a family, so yeah. we decided to call it Family Meat. We've been here ever since me and my wife. We've been here since then. And your wife's an inter integral part of the business. Uh, yes, no yeah. doubt. I can't do it without her. Yeah. yeah. She seems to be doing all the hard work today while he's doing the interview. So <laughs> I don't know if he's going to catch it, you know, at home tonight. Yeah. And he's yeah. scolded for that, but uh, oh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's, that's the price you pay for fame, I guess. What's your specialty here? What do y'all do the most of? The well, most of is processing cattle. People bring their cattle here. We 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 butcher it and uh, and we package it ready for the freight. That's number one. Yeah. We also do deer. We do all kind of animals and, and deer processing. We do a lot. Sausage. Sausage is number one. Number so one. Do you do different t types of sausage? I make or? about fifteen to twenty different types of sausage. All the way from boudin, summer sausage. Bologna, salami, jalapeno and cheddar, pineapple, uh, blueberry, bratwurst, andouille. I can go on and go on. So does this is this come from uh, from the beef or from the deer or from? For, I can make it from anything. 
What do you think? Uh, where are you at in five years? Hopefully retirement. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna stay with it as long as we can. Yeah, you know, it's just hard work. A lot of lifting. Yeah. Pick up a thousand pounds a day, easy. Yeah. And, uh, at one time. Yeah. What are the What is the side of big weight? Uh, they average from four hundred to five. 500 pound of just a side. And you have to pick it up from there, bring it to the cutting room, cut it, package it, put it in the freezer, let it freeze. And then they come, you have to box it up and pick it up and put it in their bed. So there's a lot of pickup. Have you had struggles in business, say, uh, from uh, economic downturns or hurricanes or anything like that? Was there something in the way that really was tough for you to get over that hump? Yes, uh, Katrina. Katrina done some damage to the business. Of course, we had electricity for a little while. We had a lot of meat in the freezer. You know, it was still good. So, what can you do? We throw it away, put it back in the trailer, went to the neighborhood, and then start giving it to people. Instead yeah, throw it away. Yeah. You know. And we all suffered. I did the same thing. I had a freezer full of meat and the food, and I'm like, so. I sent somebody down to the corner market, let everybody know we got all this meat. And I, I turned around about 15 minutes later and there's a line of about 150 people from my neighborhood out in Pell right. lined up to get the food and we gave it out so there was nothing left. Right. And the insurance oh. didn't pay nothing. Really? It fixed the building. It didn't, it didn't pay for some, the meat that was dead yeah. lost? Right. All of it was lost. But it was a hard time, but we made it. I think Perseverance is you know, your middle name. Was you came here? You came here for an education, right? Right. And then, right. along the way, you ended up working. Right. Uh, when you came here, was Gaddafi in, in, no, in yeah. power? Yeah. yeah. That's the reason I left the country because of him. Yeah. Went here to go to school, engineering school. Which yeah. I went for a couple of years. I didn't finish because I had a scholarship from the government, and he cut it off. So I was out in the street. So you were stuck. Yeah. Without money. Right. I was living so the, the restaurant street. business was there. You yeah. living in the streets. Yeah. I had to go get a job. I got three jobs. Yeah. I was working three jobs in the coast. And uh, one of them was a restaurant business, and I've been in it ever since. Yeah. Well, you uh, made it through. Didn't ask nobody for no money. No, 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 no. That just shows you you can do it. Uh, so you what? Can do it. You can do anything you want if you work hard for it and respect people. So they respect you. And you can go anywhere. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I believe that. And I, and I know from you, you know, working with you uh, over the years, uh, our relationship was very good. And I always admired uh, the job that you did. And I always trusted him. It's tough to trust somebody all the time to know that they can do the job that you need. I was the general manager. He was the assistant. And uh, he was the right-hand man. And uh, uh, you didn't have to worry. And the people respected him. They didn't like us all the time, no. but they respected us, and we had a good thriving business here um, in Hattiesburg and, uh, and in Huntsville, and I too. And I want to thank you. You don't have to thank me, brother. You, you earned it. You, you, uh, you encouraged me. You trusted me, and you just threw that business in my head and said, you say, thank you over, and I did. Yeah, you did it. Because of you. Well, I'm, I'm glad I gave you the opportunity, but you know what? You took the opportunity and you did it yourself. And that's you. And I knew you could do it. And uh, everybody that worked for you, they knew that as well. Right. And you had the respect of all the people. And that's hard to get when you got... I think we had 110, 115 people working for us back yeah. then. We were very busy. Chesterfields was our sister restaurant uh, when we had Rocket City. And uh, we were doing some high numbers uh, with about a $5 check average. So we, actually, we were doing more covers than... Chesterfields, and uh, this guy here had a lot to do with that. It was a very successful endeavor. And, one, of the, uh, one of the best places to eat lunch five years in a row. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, We had a we had a we had a fourteen minute. I think it was 14, 15, minutes, 15, minutes, 15, minutes, 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes of free lunch. Free. So you had to have it out there in fifteen minutes of the. And everything cooked from scratch. I don't think we ever gave away more than four or five in that time period, but we cheated a couple of times for you guys out there. So some of you got <laughs> some of you got gypped. <laughs> We didn't really have a sophisticated clock system, but we kind of, you know, but everybody kind of had fun with it. But the thing was, the food came out quick, you could get back to work, and that was important to those people right. to get back. Because right. some people came from back in the old days, Rocket City was one of the only places out west, uh, which now it's 
totally you know not right. but people came from downtown Hasburg and they came for lunch and so the problem back then was getting back and it was only a two-lane road right. so those of you guys who were here then remember that it was it was tough to get back and forth and so that was one of the ideas that we had and it worked and uh, we, we were very busy and like I said I think we were up to 150 120 people at, at our high point of, of employees and that's that's tough to manage as well yeah. most of them were college students uh, yeah. that uh, worked in, as waiters and some of them said kitchen. call me till today none of them called me yeah. <laughs> so you did a better job none of them called they me did, they did they say no. there's more gratification in that than making a lot of money if you can help somebody and uh, help them to you know sustain right. their family and move on and, right. and that whole thing trickles down to the next generation so that's right. what in a way this this podcast or this show that we're doing is kind of that was one of the ideas behind it is to show people you know how I came about how you know all my friends like you came about here right. and were able to persevere I think is probably the word what is your advice to people out there that you don't know uh, that are thinking about getting into food business or just any business in particular as they move I, forward. I would say work hard be honest and um, and just give it your best and you get somewhere. If you don't, it's not going to work for you. It's Just simple as that. Give it, give it your best. That's all. Okay. Those are good you words. You can do anything you want. Good words of wisdom from a guy who 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 has walked a walk and has come from another country. Uh, it was always fascinating to me to see that, and uh, I don't think I could do it. You know, being honest with everybody out there. Uh, but uh, I'd sure give it a try, but this guy did it, and so my hat's off to him, and uh, he uh, he's one of my favorite people, and uh, you got a cow or you got a deer, you need it <laughs> You need it processed, come out to Family Meat in Olo, out in God's country, you call Family Meat, Faraj Muhammad, they'll, they'll take care of you, uh, and uh, they'll give you a good price, you tell them I sent you out here. Thanks everybody. Thank you.